Look, welcome to the video. Um, like, comment, subscribe. 45 subscribers and five away. Um, this is going to be a series on my channel. You know, I'm a political science major. I know about politics. I really enjoy politics. I don't really want to do a job in it, but I have the knowledge that I don't think most people have because they don't really understand the system because the system works really well. It's really good. We really are mad about the people in the system or what the system is. But like the system itself works really good. It controls itself really good. It goes stuff changes when it, people want something to change. It changes, you know, it gets, you know what I'm saying? Like the political will is there, right? Um, so I want to inform people about that. And when um, I hear like pundits, uh, I, no, I'm not going to call it. It's not a pundit. But when I hear people who speak about politics and they don't know about politics, it just aggravates me because they don't understand it. And then they're talking to people who don't understand politics and they're getting their under, they're looking at this person as like a source of information that is good for politics. And they don't understand the political system. They don't understand. They don't understand it. Like they don't. And Stephen A, in this one example, this is Stephen A said is just not understanding the system. It's just not how the system works. It's just, just it's just not how it works. It doesn't make sense to like, like come on. Like it's just it just this makes no sense. Okay. And so we're gonna go through it. This is why you don't you need to listen when you listen to somebody, you need to make sure what they're saying is factual. It sounds good. It's you know, you gotta you know, we got to decide if it has merit. And sports, man, Hall of Famer. I mean, he even says some bad takes in sports, but sports, he knows about sports. He did that his whole career. So, but politics, no. Let's start the video, man. Let's get into it. Trump's going to get reelected. I'm not mad at this opinion. I mean, you can have this opinion. You're wrong. I mean, I don't, I don't think he will, but. The reason for the opinion is the problem that you'll see. Donald Trump's going to be the next president of the United States. If this kind of stuff that I'm reading continues to happen in American cities, Donald Trump is a shoe in for re-election, even if he's a convicted felon. Now, that's a damn shame. But somebody got to say it, so I'm going to say it. Did you read the story coming out of New York City? Okay. Did you read think about this. Now, what he's about to say is, think about what he's about to say. He thinks that this event will help Donald Trump win the election. Okay. Now, before we get into it, let's think about the scope of this event, where this event pertains to, what area it pertains to, and how that area is relevant to all the other areas. Read it. Involving Mayor Adams. Eric Adams. Well, I'm a fan of, by the way. I like him. But I don't like the story that I read. And so Stephen A. Smith is, never mind. He oh, voted him in, no cap. And I think tough. it's a story that can't be ignored. And it's talking about how $53 million in prepaid credit, credit cards are in the process of being distributed to migrant families. Now I understand what people are thinking about, what they're wondering about here. Because they're saying to themselves, what's the problem if you're on the left? There's a big problem if you're on the right. No, it ain't that simple. We have to understand that we don't want people eating out of garbage cans. We don't want people starving. We don't want people separated from their children. The children separated from their position. It's taking office. We all know that he's capitulated to the extreme left. And even though we wouldn't say specifically and definitively that the borders are open, every time you turn around, particularly in states like Texas and Arizona and to a lesser degree, California, it is an extreme problem. Well, guess what else is the problem? It's a problem in New York City. My home. And I gotta tell you something right now. If it wasn't for my daughter being there, I'd be gone. It's because it's mayhem. Folks don't know how to act. It's not an accident that the former president keeps bringing up law and order, law and order, law and order, because those are catchwords. Those are the kind of things that make you go to the polls and vote out of fear. It works. Throughout history, it has worked. But now this is a different kind of fear, but a fear tinged with frustration. Because when you hear about migrants receiving $53 million in prepaid credit cards, the Eric Adams administration in the mayor's office in New York. Now, he said that the, the tactic that Republicans use to, you know, fear, law and order, you know, you're not safe, borders are open, this works. And it does. It worked for Trump in 2016. It doesn't universally work. Uh, he lost in 2020. They lost midterms in 2022 with the same messaging. They like this same messaging. They lose every, they're losing spots and they lost the Senate. They're barely holding Congress together. Like 
they're running a candidate against a candidate that already beat them with record numbers. Like they're like they're running a loser. Okay, like. New York City will tell you it's going to save about $600,000 a month. The office in New York City will tell you it's going to save $50 million in prepaid credit cards. The Eric Adams administration in the mayor's office in New York City will tell you it's going to save about $600,000 a month. Because when you hear about migrants receiving 53... Yeah, like, it, it's not, the rhetoric's not working for Trump. Hasn't been. Like, why would it work now? I don't understand. Like, people, people, the, the rhetoric Republicans use raises up fear... So their base goes and vote, but it, the opposite effect happens because people fear Donald Trump so much that they go out and vote for somebody they call Sleepy Joe, who they think is has dementia and and isn't running the country good, even though he's doing a good job. Okay, so $50 million dollars in prepaid credit cards. The Eric Adams administration in the mayor's office in New York City will tell you it's going to save about six hundred thousand dollars a month. But that's not how poor people are looking at it. You know what black poor people are looking at it like? You know what Latinos who happen to be poor that arrived in this country are looking at it like? Where that money come from from us? I could have used it. I could use an extra 500 a month. I could use an extra thousand dollars a month. And they're saying that. And you know why it doesn't matter? Because they don't vote. That's the problem. Old people vote. Old people get what they want. Young people don't vote. Young people don't get what they vote. If young people complain about old politicians getting into office, but then they don't vote. Like, how do you think a politician gets into office? You vote them in. If you voted, you could vote 18-year-olds in. The, the, I don't, actually, I don't know how what the House of Representatives, but you can vote young people in if you vote. If young people voted this nation, like, it would look differently. I don't think a Republican would win again in decades. Like, it would look way different. It'd probably be more uh, left. Yeah, definitely more left. Like, because young people are way more liberal, but they don't vote. They don't care about the political system. It doesn't affect them. So, poor people don't vote. Like, say, if you're talking about Trump people, like, they don't vote as much. Like, poor and black, why would I don't care about the system? The system, I think the system is against me. Like, the, I, the amount of black people I hear talk about that, it's just dumb. It just, it's just not... I understand how you can feel that way. That's how people talked. And back in the day, it was like that. But now it's like, bro, you can vote. Like, you couldn't vote back in the day. Like, like you literally couldn't vote. Now you can. Okay, that's what we fought for. Why are you talking about the system doesn't work? We fought for voting, and now you don't want to, and now you don't convince yourself that the thing that we fought for and did a whole movement for is worthless. Why would people... Get get sprayed with hoses in the streets, get bit up by dogs, blew up in buses, sit in, spit on. They were abused, nonviolence. They did all that for the right to vote. And people nowadays are saying that that does nothing. Okay, I don't care about these people's opinion because they don't vote. And that's the same thing the representatives think. They don't vote, so nobody cares about what they think. They don't vote. I can do that. They want to sit up there. I just want to read some of this stuff to you because I want to make sure that we put it in its proper context. New York City will soon launch a $53 million pilot program to hand out prepaid credit cards to migrant families housed in hotels, according to the report. The New York Post has reported that 500 migrant families at the Roosevelt Hotel will receive prepaid cards to help them buy food. The program is intended to replace the current food service provided there, the Post reported. A spokesperson for Eric Adams said, quote, not only will this provide families with the ability to purchase fresh food for their culturally relevant diets and the baby supplies of their choosing, but the pilot program is expected to save New York City more than $600,000 per month and more than $7.2 million annually. Here are the stipulations. Migrants eligible for the program must sign an affidavit, affidavit stating they will only spend the funds on food and baby supplies or else they will lose access to funds, the report said. Another stipulation. The amount available to each family depends on their size and how much income they are receiving, according to a contract reviewed by the Post. A family of four might be provided nearly $1,000 each month or $35 per day for food. If the pilot program is a success with the initial 500 migrant families, it'll be expanded to all migrant families staying in hotels, which is currently... It's food stamps, Okay. It's not that crazy. It's food stamps. Okay. They were all they doing before. This saves us money. Now, um, I mean, if we're talking about like it saves us money, it's food stamps. Like we already do food stamps for what's the name? It's giving them it's not that insane. Okay. It's not that much money. Well, I don't know, maybe in New York. I don't know. But it, it does sound like a lot. But like, um, like it's not it's food stamps, okay? It's just food. 
They're not buying crack with the card. I mean, it's this is literally the same stamps. Like, sorry, you can't buy... Is, what, you, more than like 150,000 like migrants. sell your food ever. stamps to buy crack. Okay? The same thing migrants can't do. Like, they can't... Probably New York City, since 2022, overwhelming city resources as Texas Governor Greg Abbott has bust asylum seekers to New York. Now, there are people who are absolutely appalled by that. Adams has decried to bust arrivals as a humanitarian. Migrants will cost about the sway potential to Mayor Eric Adams, who I respect. That's impoverished, that's desperate to come to the United States of America and them not to cross to politicians right here in America from different states like Florida, Arizona, and beyond, and talking and negotiating with them, you're going to go to citizens and politicians in Latin America, Mexico, Colombia, and Ecuador to ask them for assistance? Have you lost your ever-loving mind? That makes no sense. That's not the worst plan I ever heard in my damn life. Why would they listen to you if they're desolate and starving and in desperate need, so much so that they come here, and even for $1,000 a month, that's exponentially better than whatever conditions they're facing in their respective countries? Why would they listen? It comes down to us. And being able to work together as a nation. And clearly that's not the case. He said work together as a nation. Okay. We'll, 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 and so we'll you have this kind of mayhem going on. Which like work together as a nation. This is a mayor. A mayor of a city. A mayor of a city. This is not a federal position. It's a state position of a city. Now it's one of the biggest cities in the nation. It's a city. That's all his jurisdiction is a city. It's a circle. Like, I understand this is one of the most powerful cities in the in the country, but like, it's a city. He's a mayor. Like in a left leaning area, a metropolitan. Like, dude, like this is one of the most left leaning areas in the nation. Votes always votes blue. Obviously, the policies there are going to be more left leaning. This has nothing to do with federal anything. But I continue. Way, doesn't surprise me at all because it's an election year. And usually these stuff, this stuff gets highlighted in a, so you can pick and choose. What it came down to for me is this. I see homeless folks in the streets of New York all the time that are American citizens. I damn sure see them in California. We've got poor, impoverished, starving people who were born and raised in this nation. How in the hell do we come up with a $52, $53 million pilot pro program for illegals, but folks who are here legally are born here, we don't have enough of them. Just like we could come up with- Bro, we have so much for poor people. Like I was poor. Like, what do you mean? Poor people don't be paying taxes. Bro, poor people don't pay taxes. Poor people get food stamps. They get WIC. They get they get Section 80. Like, bro, poor people. There is so much stuff. Medicaid. Medicare. Like, bro, poor people get so much in this nation. They get the protection of being in America, the most secure place in the world. Like, what are we talking about? What do they don't get? You act like you act like migrants is getting food stamps, illegal immigrants, and and regular people aren't. Like they're now it's just like they're just getting food stamps. This is not some like out of the world. They was already doing it. Like you voted him in. Billions for Ukraine. But somehow, some way, we can't fix the homeless problem. I'm down for helping Israel. Bro, and like, why are we comparing Ukraine to problems at home? Bro, these problems, the, but Ukraine is money. Bro, you, Ukraine is like, Ukraine is so simple. It's just give them supplies. It's give them the stuff we have built already. And we can control what we give them. Or we give them the money to go buy stuff and we're like, oh, you buy this stuff. And we, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's easy. Solving homeless, the homeless problem and, and um, low paying wages and all that, that's hard. That's way harder to get past. That's going to take multiple bills. Okay? These two things are not comparable. And that's how you, I, you, I know you don't understand the political system because one has a political will, the other doesn't. When the Ukraine stuff happened, both sides said, we need to give money. We need to give money. Each time, we need to give money. We need to give money. We need to give money. They agreed to give money. Now they're trying to withhold it, but they agreed to that. Nobody has come together in Congress or, I mean, they did in, in New York, and they said, we're going to give the migrants some money. Like, but in Congress, that's not happening. Like, they the Republicans literally wanted a border bill and then they, they do a border bill and they, they don't want to pass it now.
I'm down for helping address the situations with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, okay? I'm down for helping the Ukrainians and fighting off Russia. And why would we let Russia just take over Ukraine like back in the day and become the Soviet Union again? The most contentious time, one of the most contentious times in the world where we were threatening nukes and having a cold war fighting proxy wars, proxy wars through other countries to fight each other and building mass weapons of mass destruction and trying to like, why would we want to even kind of let that happen? Why would we want to make the same mistake of the past like we did with Germany after World War One and appease them and then Hitler came up and started killing Jews? Like, okay, so like, why would we want to appease somebody who we know in the past like that failed at the world conquering thing, though they're getting all the territories and broke up into many? Why would we let them try to do that again? Why would we? Why would we let Palestine um, Israel be attacked? by Palestine like why would we just let them be just terroristic attack why, why, why would we let that happen okay like why would we they're an ally like why would we it's not like they're in the like the dead wrong like if you get terroristic attack you have the right to defend yourself okay so what's wrong with us supporting that these solutions are so simple compared to solving homelessness okay or fixing why people are poor these are so much simpler it's literally sin we're the number one military. We have a bunch of materials. We know everything about the military. We make the stuff. We send it. We send them the money so they can buy the stuff. It's simple. We do this amazing. That's the one thing we do the best is the military. So why are you comparing that to solving homeless? We've never been able to solve. In America, the war on drugs, that didn't work. The war on poverty, that didn't work. War on crime, that, that didn't work. None of those wars, the uh, none of those wars... The, the war on hunger. None of these wars actually, like, happen. What about poor and desolate citizens like, here? How the hell do you print money for foreign countries? But you don't print that money to help eradicate folks that are starving right here in the street. Well, they do. It's called fucking food stamps. God damn, like, what do you mean? Why do you think we're going to debt every year? You think we're just going into, we're going into more debt. The Ukraine stuff is extra debt. Okay, it's extra debt. We already go into debt every year with the budget. Why do you think we're in debt? The stuff provided to the people adds up. They spend extra stuff and out of budget every year. Every year almost. The budget, I mean, the debt is crazy. Like, come on. Streets of America who were born and raised here. This is what I'm talking about. And so when you have something like that, what's the one way to eradicate it? Yes, you got to have a flourishing economy. Yes, you can't have inflation. Yes, you can't be on the verge of a recession. Milk don't need... We're not on the verge of a recession. The economy's doing great. People don't feel that. They're, they're starting to feel it. But like, like, what are we talking about? We're not on the verge of a recession. The economy's doing great. Stock market doing great. Like, you're wrong. It cost $7. Bread don't need to cost $5. Don't get me started with how much sugar costs. You and he's talking about how much sugar, and this, and this makes me angry because he's wrong. Inflation and stuff is down. It's like, it's been low, like it's lowered. Gas prices have lowered. Like, all this stuff is lowered from what it was. It's like, and he's talking about sugar prices and get, like, this man is rich. He's just taking people at their word. He's rich. He, he hasn't had to struggle for sugar and all that for he ain't been struggling for none of that for probably two decades. Two, three decades. Two decades. I don't know how old he is. He might be 60. Like He's been popping for a while. He ain't struggled in forever. He don't know what the struggle is anymore. His struggle is just working. That's it. Talk about employment all you want to. You can talk about the labor Raising prices. The kids. Rates, but guess what? If you ain't making no damn money, the poor you struggle. gotta get two jobs to pay the same prices or to buy the same amount of stuff that you used to buy and the price is higher than it used to be because of inflation, then guess what? What are you really accomplishing? That's why Trump is on the verge of getting elected, re-elected. John Doe. Because when he was in office, there was a flourishing economy. There's a whole bunch of other problems. Whole bunch There's of a flourishing economy now. And I personally think now. his return to the presidency is going to be civil war in this country because he's going to be desensitized to bringing right. anybody together because he's going to be on the... He says something like that, like you can see right here, what he's saying when he said it on his social media page. I can't blame 50 Cent for that. You want what's going on. Maybe we should consider Trump. When he says something like that, like you can see right here, what he's saying when he said it on his social media page, I can't blame 50 Cent for that. Like you can't blame 50 Cent for saying, 
What the F, Mayor Adams? Call my phone. I don't understand how this works. Somebody explain. Can't explain that I'm stuck. Maybe Trump is the answer. Now, could you imagine? Trump is the answer. We're talking about the mayor of New York, right? Let's pull up paint. The mayor of New York. Now, if we do a circle, right? This is U.S. politics. We're going to make like three circles. I think three is enough. You know, this is, oh, you know, it goes federal, fed, and state. Okay. It goes federal and state, right? You see this? It's a two layered system. Federal and state. The federal government has powers and they do what they can. And the states have most of the have all the other powers that the this, the federal governments do not have. OK. So really, the circle is kind of I'm just showing you that the power dynamic, this is how it goes, because if the federal government says a law, uh, if they make a law, the states have to follow that law. You see what I'm saying? Like they can't that they can't violate it. I mean, they can't like violate it. They can't like go with like oh, well, I guess for certain stuff like weed and stuff, but like they couldn't stop the federal government for arresting people for weed. They couldn't do that. Okay, so like each of these two groups have powers. Okay, and they're saying that these two are connecting. That's what they're insinuating. They're saying that because the mayor. Mayors are in here. Mayor is a state. Mayor is state. You can't really read that. Let me let me change this. Um, take that back. The mayor. That state. That's a small position in the, that state. You know, you got representatives, reps. You got the reps in the state. You got a uh, Congress. That's the federal reps. You know what I'm saying? We got the press. You know what I'm saying? Um, Supreme Court. This is terrible, but um, you know what I'm saying? Mayor is down here. They're saying these two things are connected. He's saying that 50 Cent is saying, and Stephen A. Smith is saying, I can't blame him for saying that, that we, we should go with Donald Trump because the mayor of New York, the mayor, a state issue in a liberal leaning blue state. He did he did a very liberal left leaning thing in, in the bluest state on the planet other than California or city on the on the planet other than California. He made that decision and they're saying that's on Biden, they're saying that's on the president and that we should go with Trump because a Democrat in a city made a law like Biden had anything to do with that. Biden had nothing to do with that. Nothing. That doesn't affect anybody outside the city of New York. Nobody outside the city of New York. Nobody. Nobody at all. Why would this affect the race? It wouldn't. It's just a dumb opinion. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> Why would you, excuse me? Why would you pick Trump over Biden because of a state issue in a, a blue state? Why would you do that? Biden can't do anything about this other than outlaw, make a make a law passing it to where illegal migrants can't get food stamps somehow, which I don't know if it's legal. But that's what uh, the president and Congress together would have to do. Maybe even the Supreme Court, because the president could do an executive action, but that could be challenged and struck down by the in, in federal courts, which is Fed court. That's just the that's the Supreme Court is the Supreme, but Fed courts they do a lot of the most of the rulings. You know what I'm saying? Supreme Court only come in when they got to, but look, 
There's just no way. You see this? It's very simple. Federal is on the outside. These two are separated. They have their own powers. Congress can't go in and um, try to take over the power that if they don't have that power, they don't have it. And to get it, they got to like give it to themselves. They have to make an amendment to the Constitution, which is difficult. They have to do things to... to they have to make laws. They have to come together and cooperate to overcome the states. The states have the power to do what they want. That's why you go to another state is this abortion rule and another state is this one. Like, okay, so that's how it works. So the fact that you really think that you want to sit up there and excoriate this makes I sense. It doesn't. Cute now. Wait. It doesn't. He didn't pick sides in 2020 when he wasn't telling you to vote for Biden or Trump. He was just saying, yo. I want to present a plan for black America and see who's willing to listen. And Trump gave the okay and the impression. Trump gave the okay. What did Trump do for black people during his, like, bro, like, Biden done did more for black people than Trump has. Maybe, not, maybe, like, not, like, specifically for black, just in general, just to the health of the country. When Trump left office, how healthy was the country? It was struggling I don't know why people don't accept that COVID. They, they say Trump stuff was good when he left. We were struggling. Biden had to save the day, and he did, with some policies. It wasn't on him. But the economy bounced back. COVID ended. Inflation is down. Like, it's good. Like, what? He was willing to listen. You want to call Ice Cube a sellout now? Trump got 12% of the black vote in 2016. He got 16% of the black vote in 2020. And still lost. They're projecting he's going to get more than 20% of the black vote in this upcoming election. It's too early for all that. That's what they're saying. And who's to say black folks would be wrong to vote for him? I told y'all before. What do you mean who says? Who says he threw over? You just said that a civil war would come about if he got in. And you're saying who would say they're wrong for voting for him? Bro. So a mayor, a, a Democratic mayor in a city does some migrant, give some, give some, give some illegal some food stamps, and that's gonna change the election. I am no Republican. I voted for one Republican in my life. That's Governor Chris Christie in New Jersey because I thought that Corzine was a disaster. I voted for Al Gore. I voted for Barack Obama twice. I voted for Biden, despite the crime bill that incarcerated a whole bunch of people in the 90s that looked like me. I shoved all of that aside. All of it. Because I knew how divisive Trump would be. But as we sit here now, and we watch something like this transpire, where there seems to be more rapt attention being paid to folks who are not even here illegal, illegally, nor are from this country, yet we want to turn around and ignore us. Black folks, Latinos, and beyond. Who are and like, bro, well, like, and this, like, Republicans don't help out black people and Latinos in, like, when Trump was in office, what was he doing? He, he tried to build the wall. Why, did, why didn't he use that money for blacks and Latinos and, like, he literally got emergency funds and like said a made said it was an emergency and used Pentagon funds to build a wall. They could have been used for black homeless poor people. Like, what are we like how is he better? Or impoverished and are in need. We know why you're doing it. Because you want that voting block. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, what did I say years ago when I used to give speeches and say I wish for at least one election? Everybody vote. Want it. No, they don't want it. It's theirs. It's like 80% of people vote Democrat. You go to the people who vote for you. You wouldn't go to people who don't. You wouldn't go to bum, bum. You wouldn't go to Utah and try to win the state. Like, come on. You're going to go to the people that support you. And if 86% of a group supports you, you would focus on that group. Every black person in America know. votes Republican. It's common you know sense. You know why I used to say it? Because you'd have to flatter us from that point forward. You couldn't just take the black vote for granted. It's not just certainly don't deserve to be ignored. This is just dumb. Because others who are in At this At the country, end of the day, 
Uh, look, man, don't be like Stephen A. Don't just get, just bro, be informed. Inform yourself like you don't know how the political system works. You don't. This is it. This is this is not it, but this is part of it. Okay? Like this is how it works. Like this is this is how it works. Federal government has rules. The separation of powers. Separation of powers. Okay, it has rules. With all the rules they don't got, the state got. The state does what it wants with those rules. The Fed really can't do anything about that unless they change their rules to affect their rules. But if they make a rule, that rule is supreme. Okay? That rule is the law of the land. The Fed makes a rule. It's the law of the land. Okay? They had the final say-so. Um, because they're the all, you know what I'm saying? They're above the state in power. Okay? And these two things are different. State representatives are different from federal ones. Okay, like, it's different. Like, it's different. It's the same, but it's different. Okay, same system, but different. You know, these states are different. They have their own little unique things. We have 50, 50 states, I think, 51 states. I don't know. I don't know. Something like that. And so, they're, 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 all, they, they're all, like, unique because as states, they can do, they have freedom to do what they want in some areas. Okay, so New York, and 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 the mayor is even further down because the mayor is like the governor of a city. It, it, the mayor is a governor of the city, basically. So we're talking about a governor of the city, not even a governor of a state. We're talking about a governor of a city. The leader of a city is going to affect the federal election. The leader of one city. Come on, man. It just doesn't make sense. And if you're making political decisions based off that, I hope you don't vote. And if you do vote, you're probably a Trump supporter or a lefty that's lost in the sauce. You're not looking at the facts. And for that, if you disagree, like, comment, and subscribe, comment. If you agree, like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me, you know what I'm saying? Five away from 50, give me 50. I'm on a roll. Have a good day.